Many people believe during the Middle Ages, from the fall of the Roman Empire to the Renaissance, the world was a very dark place with death, destruction, and famine. Many people even believe that the Middle Ages were too terrifying for any beautiful scientific re revelations to occur, although that is very false in the eyes of science. In the Muslim civilization, that stretched from Spain to China. The golden rays of discovery and invention shined over everything. Some of the most important discoveries to man was in this time. The Muslim civilization at that time was able to achieve amazing strides in understanding the world around us. One of the most revolutionary ideas and inventions during the Golden Ages was revolving around optics. Born in 95 AD in Basra, Iraq, Abu Ali ibn al-Haytham, or otherwise known al-Hazam, is known to be one of the first ever scientists. Before al-Hazam revolutionized the world of optics, he used to earn a living from translating all the great work from the mathematician Euclid and selling it for cash. Towards the middle of Al Hazan's life, he was getting more known for his genius. From word of mouth, the king of Egypt found out about his genius and asked him to come to Egypt and build a dam for the Nile River to stop the flooding. After Al Hazan arrived in Egypt, he realized that the river was too large for him to build a dam with the technology during his time. During that time, Egypt had a mad king when he realized that al Hazam was not able to build the dam, he was very furious with him. So the king wouldn't send him to exile. al Hazam decided to pretend to be crazy, although his plan didn't work to the full extent and he was thrown in jail for more than 10 years. Ironically, in jail, Al Hazan was able to unlock the world's greatest mysteries of his time. During Al Hazan's time and before, society believed the only reason humans were able to see is because light emitted from their eyes. Al Hazan was able to make a breakthrough in optics, ironically, in the darkness of jail. Al Hazan felt an excruciating pain whenever he looked at light and he said to himself, Light could not possibly be emitted out of our eyes because when we look at the sun, our eyes hurt. Afterwards, Al Hazan began to piece together an entirely new explanation for how humans see. Al Hazan even started to see relationships in light reflection through mere objects. Al-Hazan even started to see relationships of symmetry and light, where the angle of the incident ray equals the angle of the reflected ray. Al-Hazan started seeing more and more relationships, and eventually he saw something that no one has ever seen. From the confinement of his walls, he saw an image being projected from the outside through a small hole in the wall. This developed an amazing theory in his head. Al Hazan realized that light is but a bunch of rays traveling together in space. Al Hazan brought together all of his ideas about light and wrote it into the first book of optics, including his inventions and many theories. Al Hazan broke through the revelation of how humans see with their eyes. Al Hazan stated in his book that similar to a light passing through a pinhole, light passes through the eye 
and projects an image invertedly into the back of the eye. This idea was a massive change in the science of the world. Within the Book of Optics, Al-Hazan stated many more inventions. These inventions have many connections to our modern world. When Al-Hazan realized that he could project an image of an object, people were astonished. He tried very hard to take that similar idea and miniaturize it to make it into everyday use. Therefore, Al-Hazan developed the Camera Obscura, which takes the light that comes through a lens, which gives an inverted image, and then he reflects it from a mirror, which displays on a screen an upright image of the object. Al-Hazan's invention allowed many artists, such as Jonas Vermeer, to paint in much more detail, which advanced our modern understanding of history due to the detailed paintings. Even though Al-Hazan's inventions were amazing, there are some profound physics behind this. He said that light travels in straight lines. Therefore, when light that is surrounding an object passes through a hole, the top of the object will become the bottom of the image and the top of the image will become the bottom of the object due to laws of geometry. Throughout history, the Camera Obscura evolved into multiple and multiple image forming apparatuses until we achieved our modern camera, as well as cinemas. All of these applications are under the same principle that light rays travel in straight lines. Imagine a world without Al Hazan's invention that led to the modern camera and entertainment. Imagine a world where we are not able to record our culture and the milestones we achieve in our generation. These videos and pictures that I'm showing to you now would have not been able to be recorded without Al-Hazan's invention. I believe this invention benefited and changed our society. Without this invention, our society could still be recording its time on this earth through rock, paintings, sculptures, and other means. On the other hand, imagine a world without theaters. Many people go to theaters these days. If Al-Hazam never thought of the camera obscura, we would have never saw the day of light of a movie theater. Many other things are affected by theaters. For example, the Oscars. There could also be a ripple effect where movies like Harry Potter and the Titanic are dependent on the Oscars. Al Hazan's invention truly affected our society in cameras and in theaters. Without those two main things, our lives would have not been the same. When people talk about who recognized the first laws of light, they say it was Newton, although they forget that Al Hazan was the first scientist to look on the laws of reflection and reflection of light. How light bounces off objects, just like a ball bounces off a wall. Al-Hazan is discredited of many works in physics. Newton is looked at as the scientist that talked about light, although no one remembers Al-Hazan. The basics of Newton's work was actually upon Al-Hazan's research and development of theories. Al-Hazan is truly the backbone of optics. Al-Hazan even invented the scientific method throughout his experiments of light 
and their characteristics. The scientific method is also the backbone of many, many scientific discoveries. Without Al Hazan, our future in optics might be just a dream that would have been almost impossible to achieve without Al Hazan's work in optics.